We are live. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, Amy and Joshua Green, thank you for inviting us. Yeah, thank you both so much for being on today. I've been really looking forward to this conversation um, for a while now. Um, for everyone out there watching, Joshua and Amy Green. Um, Amy is the wife of Milton Green and Joshua is the son. Um, he is a incredible photographer. We're gonna talk a lot about some of his amazing work, especially um, some of the incredible work he did in collaboration with Anne Klein. Um, but for anyone who's jumping on and has uh, never joined the Women Who Do series, thank you for being here today. And to tell you a little bit more about this series, we're really here to honor my grandmother and her legacy. She stood for empowerment and really was paving the way for um, the women of today. And um, it's such an incredible position to be here today and uh, speak on you know, her behalf. As you guys know, but for everyone else out there watching, Milton shot for truly all the greats from Elizabeth Taylor, Audrey Hepburn, Marilyn Monroe, and Frank Sinatra. Um, so to kind of give everyone an understanding, what is it that really set Milton apart from other photographers? And what kind of, what did he have that really um, people were so gravitated towards him when he was, um, you know, working and creating? Why don't you answer it and I'll, I'll just play back up. Uh, okay. Look I'll out. improvise. Yes. Uh, he had uh, extraordinary talent. And he saw things that no one else saw. He was very handsome. And he adored him. And uh, what else can I say? I would say also his gift was his sense of timing. Yeah. And when he photographed people, particularly women, whether they were models, or movie stars, or friends, it was always capturing a portrait of the subject. So mm -hmm. even as a fashion picture, he really was focusing on the energy coming from the model. It wasn't so much only about the clothes. So it made the picture more of a photograph that was more attractive and more believable, more real in a way, more authentic to the person. I would say one thing that is so captivating is just how relaxed and honest, you know, all everyone looks in his photographs. There's kind of a sense of ease and you really, it makes you feel like you're there sitting um, with the model or celebrity that he was photographing. Um, did he have like a very close or personal relationship to a lot of these celebrities? Uh, well, Many of the people that he photographed became lifelong friends, and in particular, Sinatra, Judy Garland, Marlena Dietrich. Marilyn, of course, was a business and professional Name relationship. Dropper. Yeah, <laughs> Audrey. Um, uh, but also, there were models that, you know, Dovima, Susie Parker, a uh, uh, few will come to mind in a moment. But the bottom line is, he, he did have a sort of a core group of people. Uh, as far as models that he used over and over again of the period and then personalities i mean carrie grant became friends he photographed him once and then then carrie uh hired him to be a lighting director on on um, yeah, touch of the touch of mink and later milton carrie calls him up and says i need a better photographer i just fired the guy come out and shoot on father goose so it, it's there's a paul newman steve mcqueen there are people that would request him because they trusted him, you know, which was uh, which was endearing and important. Uh, and made a lot of money. <laughs> that's that's always fun. <laughs> yeah, Ben Klein, who was married to Annie at the time, in his Seventh Avenue office, had all the rejects, the clothes that buyers didn't buy, for instance. And Annie and I would always fight over the sample dresses. I was smaller than she was, but somehow we were always fighting a ben, inside Ben's closet. It's a magic place. <laughs> and uh, we loved to look a certain way. We loved to look 
pulled together at that point. Nobody wore jeans anywhere except maybe gardening. Mm -hmm. And she had exquisite taste. Their home in West Hampton Beach, I don't know if you've seen pictures of it. I haven't, but I've heard about it. <laughs> uh, she had a uh, chair hanging from a chain in the middle of the living room. And of course, that's always the one that I went to first. It was very comfortable and it swung, swung, swung. Ben cooked and she cleaned up. That was the relationship. <laughs> and I mean, for, for those trips you guys, you went on with her, um, what, what was she like? And by the way, for everyone watching out there, um, to tell you a little bit more about the relationship well, I'll actually let you guys share a little more about the relationship between um, Milton and my grandmother. Well, you tell you tell us what you know. <laughs> okay, I'll take it away. Um, so I've heard, rumor has it, um, well, I, everyone knows that famous, beautiful photo of Marilyn Monroe where she uh, she's wearing the dress that doesn't quite fit her. The um, ballerina, it's called the ballerina. The ballerina, yes. Um, she is that in that dress that she's wearing, um, it was given to Milton, um, to, to dress her in. So she acted as somewhat sometimes of a stylist, um, or a designer for, for the photo shoots and that they became great friends over the years. Well, uh, I don't think they told you everything. I bought, I got the dress. It was a, one, a Christmas present for Marilyn, except that I goofed and I, it was two sizes too small. And that's why we couldn't zip it on the side. And what she's wearing is really the petticoat of the dress with the tulle skirt. It was the underpinnings. Hmm. And that did that in your terminology did that go viral yes that picture the story in the picture has been carried forward for many years uh. and we should also confess in full disclosure that we all have carried this story forward and believed that it was accurate fully fully accurate and what we discovered literally like two three years ago is that the the dress the the tool part of the dress was from an Annie Klein dress, but the bodice was actually a, a, a bodice that came from a designer named Casper, K A S P E R, and we didn't know that until we found some damaged film that we had restored, and in that picture it showed the label. Not to take away, but I got to be honest. No, I mean, I want to hear it from the source. That's why we're here today. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, shoot me now, but it's all good. We love Annie and she's been a friend. And, and many of Milton's clothes, whenever he needed clothing just for sittings that were not fashion assigned, you know, he would have clothes and Annie would always send up clothes to the studio. So cl those, her clothes ended up in various pictures without anybody really knowing who the designer was, but that was one of the roles that Annie played in their friendship. Well, happened. they were friends, so if he needed three black dresses, all he had to do was call up the shop, as it were, and a messenger arrived an hour later. Do you know the story of how they first went into Lord & Taylor? No. You're shaking your head. Okay. No, I don't know, please. It, it was a rainy, rainy day, and there was a wonderful model, house model called Reggie and uh, Mary somebody or other. There were three of them. And the office of the buyer of Lord & Taylor called up and Ben had an appointment with finally the buyer of Lord & Taylor. So the buyer secretary called and said, 
don't come today because it's raining and uh, we can't see you today because I think your name was Miss Peppard. How about that? <laughs> uh, can't see you today. She has a personal problem, blah, blah, blah. So Ben, who had a fiery temper, said, enough of this. Come on, everybody put a raincoat on. And as they, as they were crossing 7th Avenue to go to Lord & Taylor, which is on 38th and 5th, the buyer comes walking across. And in the middle of the street, 38th Street and 7th Avenue, Ben showed the buyer the three dresses in the rain under an umbrella. Wow. <laughs> she, the buyer bought them all. And that was the beginning of Annie Klein at Lord and Taylor. Wow. Uh, that is that incredible. Ben. Yeah. When Annie divorced Ben and married Chip, they lived in a fifth downtown Fifth Avenue, where now listen to this. There was a swimming pool as you walked into the apartment. The really? First, yes. The first thing you saw was this vast, magnificent swimming pool. There was also something that very few people say about Annie. She was very sweet. She was lovely. She was a nice, nice person. Aside from all the business, Michigas. I mean, she was lovely to be with. As a matter of fact, when Milton and I were in Los Angeles and ma making bus stop, Ben and Ann had dinner with us in our home. And Annie knew that I loved cookies, the fancy, expensive, crunchy little cookies that, that New York is famous for. So she bought me, she, she made this herself. She got a box, almost like a little trunk, this big, stuffed with cookies. And I had that box, 20 years I had that box. I think the thing fell apart finally. I used it so much. Wow. She made it, yep. Oh, that's so sweet. Yes. And when they left that night, I don't particularly like living in Los Angeles, but people were very kind to us. Uh, I cried because my two friends were leaving me and I'd never see them again. Oh, uh, how about that? We were girlfriend and girlfriend. It was terrific. It sounds like you guys were very close. Um, we found a picture that Milton did years yeah. ago. I'm going to try to show this to everybody. You can see that. That's a group of 7th Avenue designers of the day. Wow. And, and in the group, right there, that is Annie. Both of her assistants, Chuck yeah. Howard and Frank Adams and Donna Karen was the third assistant. I don't know if you know that. Mm -hmm. I, I did know that. Yeah. Um, I've she heard. Picked, Frank always said she picked up pins. <laughs> <laughs> well, she came a long way. <laughs> yeah, she certainly did. How did um, Milton initially meet Anne Klein? Um, what was that? Do you remember or know how they kind of first crossed yes, paths? I know exactly how it happened. It, we all had a friend called Richard Beenan, who owned a handbag company called Rane, R-O-N-A-Y. Anyway, it was Dick Beenan who was having a party, a dinner party, and invited us, Milton and I, and there were Ben and Annie. That's how we met. And instantly, did you guys become friends first or um, did Milton first work with her and the friendship came later? Friends first, always friends. Yeah, Milton was um, simple in that way that 
when he met someone that he liked and you bec and became friends with them, then that would be the person you would call if you needed something that would help their career or his needs or somehow benefit the two of you together. Mm -hmm. So th that was just natural that way. So Joshua, I know, you know, you've spent your life kind of just dedicated to restoring Milton's work, um, over 60,000 photos. So on this series, we talk a lot about, um, legacy and, I know that that's, it's important to you to carry on your father's legacy. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about what that process has been like and kind of um, what you want to communicate with your work? Milton died in 85. And as early as the 70s, mid 70s, when Norman Mailer uh, was, approached, was asked to do the book Marilyn, the first book, it was a collaboration of, I think, 12 or so photographers that all did pictures that were in the book. At the time, when we looked at the color film that Milton had done of Marilyn, including the ballerina and many other photographs, we realized that so much of the film had spoiled and faded and degradated that it wasn't usable. And in those days, you had to do a very archaic process of Rephotographing the original on a large sheet of film, and then you would, um, you would actually airbrush it, mm -hmm. and that was okay for newspaper and magazine publication, but it was never good for fine art or large printing. It was flawed. And so back to Milton, we've been restoring his pictures, and you know it's so funny that we just did a book called The Essential Marilyn Monroe, which was a tribute. To him and that collaboration where I went back and we re-restored pictures that I had done 20 years ago and 15 years ago. We redid it again. Really? New scans. The feedback's been really good. And we sold out the first edition. It's now in its second printing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that. That's good. The Essential Marilyn Monroe by Milton Green. I just thought of something. Yeah. Phyllis Newman was married to Adolph Green, the partner of Betty Compton, Compton and Green. And every Friday night, we would play charades at their home. Annie loved to play charades. She was very good at it. Then, of course, forget about it. <laughs> he and Milton would be sitting in the corner talking. But Annie was right in there pitching. And she was very good. She was well read and always looking smart. Great shoes, great handbags. And I think she had a mink coat. Yeah. I think she had a mink coat. Ben gave her a mink coat somewhere along the line. And uh, she looked very smart. That's the word. Smart. Mm hmm and as I said, she was a good uh, charade player. Everybody wanted their, her on their team, but there were always two teams. <laughs> as, just to set the pretense, charades was a game that many people played in those days. This is what people do when they get together. You know? Serious charades. And this is serious stuff. This yeah. is no screwing around. Kind of looking back, um, Joshua, on your father and um, Amy, on your husband's life, what is something that you really hope people remember about him um, and about his legacy? You go first. That he was a true artist, had a huge talent, and he made you smile. There you go. Mm -hmm couple of things I'm going to throw in here. First of all, to photographers and artists out there, my dad would, he would look at me and he would tell me, if you can't light it with one light, you can't light it. And that is like the Zen art of photography. <laughs> <laughs> what he's saying is, if you can't light it with one light, then you don't see it. 
And if you don't see it, you can't make it happen. So what are you looking for? Find it. <laughs> one light. The other one is, um, God, have fun. Life, don't let the troubles of life get in the way of your creative process. Experiment. Experiment. Lose yourself. You know, I hate to sound like a cliche, but you're going to fail more than you succeed. But you learn. But you learn. And, and that's how life is. And don't be afraid to fail because you got to keep going. Um, and as far as the charm, he oozed charm. And I don't mean sex appeal. I mean charm. Old-fashioned. Grace. Old-fashioned. Yes. Decency. Annie, Ben, and I were all devoted Democrats, shall we say. <laughs> And she was political, and so was Ben. I never talked politics with Chip. Somehow that never came into the equation. But Phyllis Newman and Adolph Green invited Eleanor Roosevelt to their home. And the woman came in. Annie and I were standing in line waiting to shake her hand and we were shaking because all of a sudden the two of us are looking at Eleanor Roosevelt. Ben is beside himself. He was ready to jump out of the terrace window. (laughs) This was such a love feast for this lady. And the three of us when she left the room, we all had tears in our eyes. I'm crying now when I'm telling you the story. The three of us never forgot the fact that we did it together, the three of us. Plus other people there, of course. But we would sort of say, you remember Eleanor? <laughs> it was like a password, and we became happy. Just say, remember Eleanor? You're having a bad day? Remember Eleanor? She shook hands with us, and we settled down right away. That's a lovely story that nobody knows but you now. I pass it to you with great love because your grandmother well there you go i wish i could have had the opportunity to know her like you did she was an extraordinary woman so keep perpetuating her talent she did shoes she did handbags she did sweaters I don't have the, the a designer um, hidden inside me, but you know I've always been in fashion. I went to FIT. Uh, yeah. I've never worked in any other industry, so I definitely have been incredibly inspired by her in my career, and uh, she's definitely set the bar truly high. <laughs> um, yes. And she's a she's even though I didn't get to a, a chance to know her, um, it's amazing that I have her as a role model. Good. Yeah. And she well, had a great sense of humor. <laughs> I thought I've heard that yeah. I have heard. <laughs> um, well, um, Joshua and Amy, thank you very much for your time today. Um, I loved hearing more about. Milton about his relationship with my grandmother, about your incredible relationship with her. Um, And it really does help kind of color in some of those loose stories I've heard through the years. Everyone watching, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, This, I'm sure this is really a conversation unlike one we've had before. And it's been truly inspiring to be speaking with you guys both today Um, and everyone. Stay tuned, please, for future updates 
on Women Who Do, on Anne Klein Official on Instagram, and Anne Klein on Facebook. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy her. <laughs> Enjoy your grandmother. I will. I promise. Good. Wonderful. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you, everybody.